Let's review what big O means and how it works in some simple cases. For starters, let's go back to the definition. Big O is a class of functions. Big O of g of x consists of all functions f of x such that f is bounded by g times some constant c, everything in absolute value in the limit. Maybe it's going to zero, maybe it's going to infinity. Ooh, it's kind of a mouthful. Things you gotta remember. Don't forget the absolute values. Don't forget about the constant c, but it doesn't matter what the constant c is. That's the definition, but what does it mean? Big O can be very profitably thought of in terms of that inequality. It's kind of like a cosmic less than or equal to sign. And indeed, when you're trying to figure out what belongs in big O of something else, you're going to be thinking in terms of inequalities. So, for example, which of the following functions are in big O of x squared? Well, of course, it depends. It depends on, let's say, whether we're talking about the limit where x is going to zero or the limit where x is going to infinity. So, for example, if we consider the function x cubed and say, is that in big O of x squared? Well, in the limit as x goes to zero, what we need to answer is whether or not there's some constant c so that x cubed is less than or equal to c times x squared. And let's assume that x is a small positive number here so that we don't have to write a whole bunch of absolute value signs. Well, does that work? If x is a really tiny positive number, then x cubed is tiny times tiny times tiny. And that's much smaller than x squared, no matter what constant you pick in the limit. As x goes to zero, the quadratic bounds the cubic. So x cubed is in big O of x squared as x goes to zero. But as x goes to infinity, is there some constant c so that x cubed is bounded above by that constant times x squared? No, uh-uh, not happening. If x is some really, really large number, then x times x times x is definitely going to dominate x squared times a constant. No matter what constant c you pick, it could be really huge, but eventually x is going to get large enough to dominate it. So x cubed, not in big O of x squared, as x goes to infinity. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, oh, I get it. For any function, it's going to be in big O of x squared in one limit, but not the other. Well, let's think. Consider the function e to the x. Is that in big O of x squared? Well, as x goes to infinity, absolutely not. We know that the exponential functions absolutely dominate all polynomial functions. There's no way that e to the x is less than any constant times x squared. So e to the x, mm -mm, not in big O of x squared as x goes to infinity. However, what happens in the limit as x goes to zero? Ah, let me think. Um, x squared is going to zero, but e to the x is is going to 1. There's no way that there's some constant so that e to the x is less than that constant times x squared in the limit as x goes to 0. So this function e to the x is not in big O of x squared as x goes to 0 or as x goes to infinity. Now I'll leave it to you to try to figure out is there a function that is in big O of x squared in both limits? as x goes to zero and as x goes to infinity. I don't know, what about uh, square root of x? Let's see, is square root of x dominated by x squared in the limit as x goes to zero? Mm, no, no, that square root of x, it does go to zero in the limit, but it remains really large, even for small values of x relative to x squared. So square root of x is not in big O of x squared as x goes to zero. But of course, as x goes to infinity, oh yeah, quadratic growth definitely bounds square root growth. So what we see is that square root of x is in big O of x squared as x goes to infinity, but is not in big O of x squared as x goes to zero. 
I'm going to leave it to you to find an example of a function that is in big O of x squared in both limits. Now, as we have seen, the limit matters, but the constants do not. Notice that in all these examples, we're not caring about what these constants actually are. We're not doing the hard work to find the exact constant, the best constant. No, we don't need any of that. And that is part of what makes Big O so incredibly useful and convenient.